Hello? Hey, Anna, yes. So um, the broadcast just begun. I think someone pressed it to start. So the attendees can now hear us. Okay, okay. Um, uh, no problem. I just wanted to, um, I think possibly uh, Mutayab, have you joined? Hello? I can. I... Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. So, Mutayab, we're just waiting for to join so we can present. Um, please, um, when you are presenting or you're not speaking, just remember to mute yourself. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Excellent. And, uh, well, can we just ask you uh, for help in terms of presenting? Uh, because we're all going to do screen shares. So I will start to present first. Uh, so how should I uh, yeah. what's the way to do it? Ah, excellent. Can I check my computer if I can share my screen or not? Is it possible? Yes, yeah, so I've just made Anna the presenter, so um, she can share, but I'll make you present now. Just bear with me one moment. And then in the sharing window, uh, you'll just need to share a screen for one moment. Give that a go. Yeah, Perfect. that's all working. Excellent. So I will uh, share my presentation in the meantime. Can you see my presentation? Yeah, we can. Yeah, is it a full screen or not? Uh, it is a full screen. Uh, yeah. We can we can see the window. I mean, it is not in the presentation mode, but we can see your uh, whole screen. Now it is in the full screen mode. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. Can you Thank hear you. me, Eva? Uh, can you hear me, Anna? Yes, yes, I can hear. I can hear everyone. Okay. Perfect. So, um, I think uh, uh, perhaps, uh, wait, I'm just going to remove the, one second. I'm just going to remove this. Uh, I think perhaps we can start well. Yeah, absolutely. Good to go whenever you are. So you can begin now. Okay. One moment. Sorry. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone and uh, thank you for joining us today for our first edition of Inner Talks. So, uh, the idea is to have a series of webinars. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to hide my... Can you see my control panel? No, we can just see the screen. It's all, it's oh, all clear. Okay. Okay, perfect. Sorry, it's just on my screen. I could see the control panel. Uh, but as I've mentioned to you, so the idea is to have a series of webinars where we have our students and in some cases our graduates also join us and present to you the masters that they're currently studying with us. Um, now, hopefully, throughout the series of these webinars, once you participate in a few of them, you will have a better understanding of the masters that you're interested in studying and find the program that suits you best. Now, um, unfortunately, Hafiz, uh, who was meant to join us today, who is one of our students, uh, he was pulled in into a client meeting with EIT Inner Energy Innovations team. So he will not be able to join us. But uh, we do have two of our students today with us from Energy from Smart Cities. Uh, so we have uh, Mutayab and George. So um, both Mutayab and George uh, have uh, prepared the presentations for you. 
and uh, you will be able to ask them any questions that you might have after the presentations. Um, from my side, um, I just wanted to start to give you a, a brief overview of uh, Inno Energy. So um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I think it would be interesting for you to know a little bit more um, about our network uh, and our ecosystem in Europe. Um, then I will pass it on to Georgia Mutayab. Um, if you have any questions uh, for uh, all of us, uh, then please type them in into the Q&A box. And what I will do is after I have finished the presentation and the, um, Georgia Mutayab have also finished, then I will read the questions out and direct them to uh, whoever it's more appropriate for. So let's start. Um, let's start with uh, EAT Inno Energy. Uh, so let's start with what it actually is, uh, the EAT Inno Energy company. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Master School, hence why you're here for this webinar. But uh, what many students don't know is that EAT Inno Energy, it is so much more than just a Master School. So Today, we are Europe's largest accelerator for sustainable energy innovations. Uh, we are involved in every stage of the innovation process. Uh, we invest in people, so we invest in students like yourselves. Uh, we invest in technologies, so we invest in products and we help to deliver those products to the, mass, uh, to the market. Uh, we also invest in businesses, so we invest in startups, uh, so student startups, external startups, uh, we work with big uh, corporates out there, we work with policy makers as well. Um, and actually the company itself is very unique and has been in a very unique position ever since its establishment in 2010. Uh, and this is because we are supported by the EIT. So that's the EIT in EIT Inno Energy. Uh, so EIT is a European Institute of Innovation and Technology. It's a body of European Union. And essentially, we have been placed in Europe to drive the energy transition on the continent. Um, however, um, it is also important to mention that we are a public-private partnership. So what does this mean? This means that we, uh, yes, we do receive support from EIT, but we also have uh, major shareholders on board, so uh, very big companies in the energy sector. And this also contributes to our network uh, in Europe. Now, um, when uh, I present uh, to, uh, especially when I present to the engineers, I would like to use a little bit of a facts and figures and just to give you um, a bit more of um, information, because um, I think this really helps you to understand the, um, uh, the size of the company as well. So uh, we are dotted, uh, we have offices dotted across all of the Europe. So mainly our offices are located uh, in the same uh, places where we have the universities. Uh, we have, uh, up to date, we have supported more than 400 products. So we help to deliver those products to the market. Uh, we have made an investment of more than 500 million euros. The number of partners uh, across Europe is growing rapidly. So I have only pulled this presentation this year, and I think this number is already outdated. It's uh, definitely more than 500 partners that we currently have, which contributes to our network. Um, and most importantly, we also supported more than 230 startups that we helped to accelerate. Uh, so this is quite interesting as well, because if you go to one of our offices in Europe, uh, you will find yeah, like me and the rest of the Inno Energy staff. But what you will also find um, is we have um, like incubators. So we have uh, these uh, areas where we have actual startups sitting. Uh, and this helps for us to uh, communicate with the startups, for us to know what they're doing. Uh, and also it helps for the startups because it helps them to meet each other and it helps them to uh, interact on daily basis with EIT Inno Energy staff as well. Uh, now, uh, the last point that I wanted to mention here is the graduates that we have. Um, why I think this is important for you to know is uh, because, uh, as I said to you, we've been around since uh, 2010. 
since that time, we had a lot of graduates from master school and PhD graduates as well. Um, most of the students are now either running their own business, uh, either they work for big industry players, and whenever we can, so be it physical events uh, before corona, uh, be it uh, online events. Um, I know Energy for Smart Cities uh, usually do this as well. Uh, we invite our graduates and our alumni to meet our current students. Um, I think this is great because what you end up with is you're already building those industry connections before you even graduate. Uh, and I think this will help a lot, uh, especially after you graduate, uh, for your career prospects. Uh, now I wanted to tell you a little bit about EIT No Energy uh, Master School. So uh, you already know that EIT No Energy Master School, you, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be here uh, at this webinar. But um, I think what I normally hear from uh, students when I meet them is uh, what makes it different applying to EIT No Energy to say applying to a university directly. Now, uh, when you apply to EIT No Energy, uh, you have a choice of 14 uh, best technical universities in Europe. Uh, what you do is you select the program that you're interested in studying. And then you select two universities that you would like to attend during your education. So you select one university for your first year, you select another university for your second year, and after you uh, graduate, you end up with a degree from each of the universities that you have attended. Uh, you can also get, uh, of course, an uh, Inno Energy certificate as well, but I mean, the real deal would be those degrees. Uh, so it will be double degree only after two years, which of course you wouldn't get if you attended to a university directly. Um, what you also benefit from is our unique learning methodologies. So um, just to make it clear, this is not a traditional engineering degree. Um, we really wanna have this innovation entrepreneurial um, drive within our students. So uh, yes, you will attend lectures uh, at the university, but um, uh, when you don't have those lectures, you will participate in uh, EIT Inno Energy uh, exclusive events. Uh, so those vary for program and per university. Um, so I didn't list all of them, but for example, just to give you more of an idea, we have, uh, we have a SADA business school, so students go uh, and spend a summer at a SADA business school for uh, intensive entrepreneurship training. Uh, we have a YouTube startup accelerator of TU Munich, so one of the top uh, startup accelerators in Germany. Uh, they have recently joined one of our programs um, and they offer support to students who are really interested in starting their own businesses. Uh, we also have uh, European Utility Week. Uh, we have students uh, traveling there. Uh, their travels and accommodation is covered by us. And uh, during the European Utility Week, students get to participate in uh, real life cases and challenges. Um, we have Azores, uh, Azores trip. So students go to Azores uh, and learn about innovative energy solutions there. Uh, and we have such things as company speed dating, um, as well as a number of other various activities uh, to drive that in innovation entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, the last uh, differentiating factor to, uh, um, applying to EIT Inno Energy rather than applying directly to university is we really um, have a big push on the career for our students. So we want to make sure that after our students graduate, they find the career that suits them best, the career that they enjoy and uh, that they want to pursue. So as I already mentioned, you're building those industry connections while you're studying. Um, any opportunity, we uh, push and encourage our students uh, to make those connections. Um, we uh, present you with uh, real life challenges uh, and business cases, what I've mentioned to you before. So not just for European Utility Week, but also for the programs, so during your programs as well. Um, we have a dedicated career center team. So they work very hard to make sure our students are placed in internships, 
Uh, so they placed in internships with our startups. Uh, they work on uh, making sure the students are aware of all the opportunities uh, that are happening in the market. They're advertised on our exclusive job portal, so it's only for our students. Um, and of course, our career center supports our students uh, with uh, preparations for interviews and uh, uh, occasionally they even give them advice on the visas as well. And in terms of um, uh, going back to this innovation entrepreneurial uh, spirit also, uh, we uh, improve on a yearly basis. So we try to uh, change things on a yearly basis to make sure our students benefit uh, the most from studying with us. So for example, a uh, YouTube startup accelerator of TU Munich, uh, that was added only this year to the programs. And uh, as another recent addition this year, we have added a dedicated accelerator program for all the students. So the idea is after you graduate, you can follow this program, you can submit your idea. And if you're successful, you will receive support from EIT Inno Energy uh, team, so the corporate side of the business. Um, and also, again, uh, depending on that idea, you can also uh, benefit from funding. So extra funding that's been available for our students. Now, uh, as I uh, mentioned, so we have several programs in sustainable energy engineering. Um, I will not go into detail about all of them because today we're concentrating on energy for smart cities. Um, however, please keep an eye out. We will have a webinar for each of these programs and uh, we will make sure to invite students uh, and as I said to you, uh, also graduates as well, uh, to make sure uh, that you can ask them questions and interact with them and make the right decision. Um, the other um, important factor that I wanted to mention to you is, of course, our study locations. So uh, we do have 14 uh, technical universities. And when I mentioned that these are top technical universities, um, they're not just top, uh, you know, in their countries. I mean, these are top in Europe. Um, at the moment, uh, most of them are, um, are ranked as top for engineering and technology. Uh, seven out of 14 are considered top for graduate employability, which is, of course, important for any of you who would like to join a, a, an industry play in Europe. Uh, four uh, of the universities are located in most innovative countries in Europe, uh, sorry, in Europe, in the world. Um, and this is, of course, is important for any of you who uh, have an innovative solution, a product or a business idea as well. And now just to uh, round up a little bit uh, before I pass it on to Mutayab. Uh, I also wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor of uh, what um, your career could look like after graduating uh, from Inno Energy Master School. Uh, so I've asked our career center to share some uh, stats with us. And um, as you can see, 12% of our graduates uh, have their own startups. Uh, so uh, four have been featured in Forbes 30 under 30. Um, I mean, Forbes 30 under 30 is great, but we also have many awards that our students have won. Um, I think uh, recently it was a Vattenfall award, so a big uh, player in Sweden, a Vattenfall. We had uh, students named as sustainability leaders. Um, I mean, uh, the if I had to, uh, if I had to uh, number all the awards that our students have won throughout the time, I actually don't think I would have space on this uh, slide. Um, in terms of graduate employability as well, I thought it would be interesting to see uh, where the majority of our graduates stay after they graduated. Uh, so the majority uh, remain in Europe and uh, I presented um, some of the stats where most of the students uh, decide to stay in Europe after they graduate. Um, I also thought it would be interesting for you to see the most common job titles uh, for graduates. And this is just to show you that you don't have to be um, boxed up in, uh, you know, in like a specific field. It's very varied. We have students going to be data analysts. We have students going to be project engineers. Uh, so you can see what you're interested in during your first year and then you can specialize uh, in your second year and uh, decide on your career throughout uh, your second year of studies as well. Um, in terms of the uh, employability as well, 92% uh, uh, of our students are employed uh, within six months after graduation. Uh, this also doesn't include the students who are in internships. So we have a lot of students in internships, uh, especially uh, during the thesis and just after their thesis. Um, 
And also I've asked uh, the Career Center uh, to share with us the top employees of our graduates. Um, so if you are located in Europe, I'm sure these are all very familiar to you. Uh, maybe if you are located outside of the EU, maybe you don't recognize all of these names. Um, but I think, um, and I would suggest actually, for you to have a look at these companies because uh, they really like to hire our students. Uh, so especially if you're studying with us, uh, it would be great for you to have a look at uh, their availability um, and just to maybe mention to them as well that you're an EIT or energy student. Um, I think this is it from me uh, from now. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, so uh, I want to make sure that Mutayab and George have enough time to present as well and we can ask them the questions. So uh, I will uh, pass it over to you, Mutayab, uh, to make sure that you can present your slides. Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay. Um. Can you see my screen or not? Yes, we can see it, but it's not in a slide mode. Yeah, just give me a minute. So it should be in the side mode now, is it? Perfect, yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Mutayya Fajit from Pakistan. I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, before coming to EIT in the Energy Master's program, I was working as a research assistant at LUMS. Um, in my uh, in the Energy Master's program, I was working, uh, uh, my first year was at KU Leuven, and for the second year, I just arrived at KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Sweden. Uh, before coming to Master's program, I was involved in various teams, which were responsible for developing the pro uh, projects and the products related to the industry and their domestic use. So the presentation would involve the details about the innovation journey, the smart cities being the entrepreneurship journey and why I chose this program so that you guys have a better insight that what, what you guys can expect from this program. So Energy for Smart Cities program is basically uh, divided into two uh, categories. In the first year, we have the innovation journey and the second year, we have the entrepreneurship journey. And along with that, uh, you all guys are also studying your relevant course of study material in one of the uh, in, in, a, in a consortium universities. So for me, it was year one was at K. Leuven in Belgium, and for second year, I came at uh, KTH Royal Institute of Technology. So innovation as a part of Energy for Smart Cities program, innovation journey is something that is uh, compulsory for all the people who are joining the master's program. But for second year, the entrepreneurship journey is an optional thing. So like me, I am not opting for entrepreneurship journey, but for the first year I did the innovation journey and it was an, an amazing experience throughout. So innovation journey is basically composed of three different activities uh, which take place at different places in the Europe. So it, it starts with the smart cities we get Barcelona and then it goes to the Biz Bootcamp at Antwerp and last but not the least is entrepreneurship school which is conducted at Antwerp. But due, due to the current situation of COVID-19, so all of these activities had to go on and except for the Smart Cities Week, which was conducted quite early, but we had the Biz Boot Camp and the Entrepreneurship School, everything online. So it actually prepared us for everything that could happen in this. Uh, I think I can see some questions. Okay. These are not so all these activities have made, made us quite used to the new normal. That is the online activities, work from home and everything. But again, if all these activities could have been could have taken place in the physical manner, we would have learned quite more than what we have uh, on the online uh, setup. But everything was quite pretty okay, and I think that it should be everybody should go through these kind of activities to develop the the develop his, uh, social and cognitive skills and everything. So, energy for smart cities program and the innovation journey. It's basically again uh, the structure of the program is uh, is divided into three categories, Smart Cities Week, Biz Bootcamp, and Entrepreneurship School. So when you arrive at the uh, universities, you are allocated to particular teams 
So you are divided into, into a team of three or four people, which basically have different kind of abilities. So how do we identify those abilities? You guys will be given a questionnaire related to that. Uh, that basically asks you some questions about the certain activities. So all these activities are basically all these questions are related to some activities which actually reveal something that how you behave in a particular manner. So all these questions actually lead to a particular physical trait that you have and how you can contribute better to a particular team. So on the basis of these uh, particular traits and the set of com and, and the combination of the abilities that you have, you are allocated to a particular team and then all these activities take place. So all the teams, they have uh, a multidisciplinary and a multi, uh, what I should say, the people will uh, having the multiple uh, attributes, they all come together into a particular team and this actually builds up an amazing team uh, all together. So for the challenge activities, you guys divided into uh, the team of four to five students. The challenges are provided by the industry owners and these challenges are, that are quite imaginative. They are not. They are real life problems and you have to find an innovative and creative solution to those real life problems. And that is what AIT in the, in the innovative and creative at the same time to bring new so to bring new solutions to the conventional problems. The problems may be conventional, but the solution has to be innovative. And that is what sustainability is for. Because if the problems are not solved through innovative measures if they are not being solved through creative measures then we cannot ensure the sustainability uh, at the same time and la and for us this time it was andorra challenge so uh, the country of andorra was on board and they had some problems related to the the smart metering they had problems related to the urban mobility they had problems related to the the tourism so all these problems were addressed and all these problems had to be sh uh, had to be addressed in a manner that they could find an innovative and creative solution and those solutions have to be practical at the same time. If they're not practical, then they cannot be realized. And if they are not realized, then how uh, is that possible that uh, the problem is being addressed? So I think that, that EIT Energy's uh, innovation journey provided me a new thinking uh, criteria that I could think of the solution to a problem in a different way. How to look at a problem, how I can get to a solution to that problem, and how could I be one of the best contributors I how I, I could be one of the best uh, uh, innovator uh, in terms of problem solving. So this is something that I think that you know energy master school has uh, uh, prepared me for. Now smart cities activities. Smart cities activities they basically are involved uh, they basically involve an elevator pitch workshop where you learn how to make a good elevator pitch and then it is also and then it is also uh, uh, then it is also in com uh, in, uh, composed of innovation methodologies uh, methodologies workshops that how you can be innovative what methodologies you should in, uh, apply so that you can have innovative solution to the particular problem and then smart cities expo so this smart cities expo is basically one of the events that is conducted uh, by fira and this smart cities expo that is basically uh, an event that brings people from all over the world from all from all and the people from all over the uh, all over the world the companies the countries who are involved in the smart cities projects and everything they come together under the one roof and they present present their projects so this activity that is uh, smart city expo that is one of the best activities that i could have that i could experience while uh, innovation journeys workshops so last and then we had the Andorra meetings we had the meetings with the people who from the Andorra and there was a final competition on the on the solutions that we presented to the problems on the basis of the certain uh, um, uh, on, on the certain criteria the our solutions were assessed and then we were given some marks and there was a final competition so everything is quite competitive everything is quite uh, every, every opportunity is a learning opportunity for you if you are part of this uh, innovation journey so I deem this opportunity as one of the best learning opportunities that I could ever have in my academic uh, academic career. Now these are some some of the pictures from the elevator pitch workshop. Uh, this is uh, the we were taught that how to develop a good elevator pitch for a pro, for a project for the for the solution because investor doesn't have enough time to listen to a to your speech for five minutes. So you so you have to wrap everything up in thirty to thirty seconds to one minute and how to wrap the wrap everything up in 30, 30 
30 seconds to one minute. And that is something that everybody should be aware of, that how you can be precise, how you can be concise, and how you can be, uh, what I should say, uh, quite, quite succinct when presenting your solution. So this is something that everybody should know that in order to present the solution, in order to present the idea to a potential investor, they should be aware that how they can deliver all the content that they want to in just 30 seconds to one minute. So this is something that is quite important. And then innovation methodologies workshop. This workshop is basically related to the methodologies that we can apply in order to find an innovative solution. Because innovation is something that everybody can do. It is not something inherent. It is not something that is particular to a particular set of people. Every person in this world can be innovative. He just needs to know the right tools, right methodologies that he can apply to find an innovative solution. Let me give an example. Let's say if you, before the advent of the ATM machines, the, the automatic teller machines that we have at the banks, everybody had to go to the bank to get some kind of cash from, uh, from their accounts or the money they have saved in their account. Now, how innovation could be applied to the ATM, uh, to, to this transaction process? We could have removed the money from the whole process. How we can remove the money? At, when you go to the ATM, you don't have any kind of, you can say, the a, a, a physical human being who, who is there who asks you that how much money you need what account you have and everything you just have one card and through that card you can access you can have access to all of your bank so that isn't something that i think that you know an innovation could be seen as a person who could have removed uh, a, a physical person from the whole process that was something that that, that that anybody couldn't think think of before the advent of 18 machines but now it is practical so in a similar manner, there are a couple of methodologies that I applied uh, in order to find an inno innovative solution to a particular problem. So for me, after this workshop, I thought that my perspective is that anybody could be innovative. All he just all he just needs to know is that how he can apply particular methodologies to a particular problem in order to find an innovative solution. Now this is a picture of a model that Dubai has made for uh, for the concept of smart cities. So everything was uh, connected through internet. Every everything was Relate, uh, was, co was coordinating among themselves, all the solar panels, all the wind energies, and all the uh, mobility setups, all the buildings where when they had to light up, all the electricity infrastructure, everything was connected. So they made a small model of it that how how they want to realize a, a smart city in uh, in Dubai. So this is just one example of it. Then there, there were a couple of examples where we could see the uh, models from the Kuwait, we could see the models from Qatar, we could see the models from different parts of the world that how they want to realize the concept of smart city, uh, smart cities. Now coming to the entrepreneurship journey. Uh, entrepreneurship journey is basically a side activity for the people who want to join in the, in the second year. So the activities are a little bit different from the innovation journey, but the concept is, uh, is again the same. All these activities take place in Barcelona, Antwerp, and Amsterdam, and the names of the activities are quite same: that Smart Cities Week, Biz Boot Camp, and Entrepreneurship School. But the activities are totally different. Um, how these activities are different? Uh, they are different in terms of what kind of tools they need to know in order to realize their own uh, brainchild, uh, brainchild idea into a real, uh, real idea. How they can realize the uh, idea into a business? How they can realize their, um, the the, what they can think of into a practical thing. So activities are related to that. And they, al they also have to focus at how they can win money from the, from, from, the, from, from the potential investors. In the innovation journey, you have to look at this perspective, but it is not that kind of crucial. But when it comes to the entrepreneurship journey, winning money, winning uh, funding from the uh, potential investors is something that is quite important when you have to realize your idea because you need money in order to run your business. So, now coming to the outcomes of the mass, uh, in, um, masters uh, of the Energy for Smart Cities program in terms of innovation journey and entrepreneurship journey, these activities teach you a lot about the teamwork, how you can be an innovative person, how you can deal with the people coming from different backgrounds, coming from different set of um, uh, people with different abilities, how you can deal with the people who cannot actually get on board with you, but have to deal with them because they are part of your team. So these are something that 
is related to negotiations. You have to be better negotiator in your life in order to make things work quite well for you. Conflict management is one of the things that I that that is quite important because when you are working in a team, not everybody thinks the same. There are a lot of people who think the other way, you think the other way, and there is a chance that you may run into a conflict. So in order to understand the team better, in order to make the things smooth for all the people, you have to ensure that you need you need to know that you must know that how to solve a conflict, how to uh, learn the pe how to learn that what a person the other person wants to say that what other person's point of view is. You cannot be on your own when you're working in a team. And then stress management that comes along the way when things are not going well, you are not meeting the deadlines, you cannot uh, work on the things in a particular time in a particular time stamp. So stress comes along with it. And stress management management is something that uh, innovation journey projects teach you a lot because the time is quite limited. You have to bring a solution to the problem. You have to bring something out of the box for the for, for, for that particular session. And obviously stress comes along because you are working in a team. There are other teams who are working as well. So you want to be on the top. You have to do your best. And even if things don't work out, it gives you a little bit of stress, but you, you must know that how to manage the stress because not all the things that you do in life bear results. They do bear results at the end of the day, but you just have to stay patient. So this is something that I that I learned from uh, innovation journeys, uh, uh, projects and activities. And then time management, creative solutions to, to the problems and experiencing the new technology trends at the Smart City Expo. Because when I came here in Belgium uh, for the for my master's program, I was totally not aware of the new technology trends that were being employed in the Smart Cities. But when I visited Smart City Expo, I was totally appalled by the things, by the projects that were being implemented in terms of smart cities uh, paradigm. So smart cities expo is one of the things that everybody should experience when he is part of a smart cities program. Now, why I choose masters of energy in energy for smart cities program, and this is something uh, that is related to my personal experience because my 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 perspective is that that life is pretty short, and you should experience different cultures, different countries. Well, in, in, a, in, in as much less possible time as you can. So this master's program gave me an opportunity to experience different countries while, while also completing my master's degree. So I just traveled to Stockholm a couple of days ago. Before that, I was in Belgium. I could travel all the Belgium. I could travel the nearby, uh, nearby countries uh, from the Belgium, which were France, Netherlands, and also I had a chance to visit, visit Spain. So experiencing different countries of Europe, different cultures and then the big the best thing about this program is that it it allows people from all over the world to get come into the one place so when i was uh, in a uh, innovation journeys activities there were people from the there were people from in, uh, india there were people from pakistan there were people from uh, united states there were people from uh, kenya there were people from uh, greece there were people from russia and you can name a country and you could actually find people from there. So you get to know about the culture, you get to know about their, uh, how, how their life goes on, what kind of activities do they have, what kind of events do they have, what kind of, uh, what kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of, what kind of life cycle, what, what kind of the uh, activities do they have in, in, in their daily life and everything. You also get to chance, get a chance to exp explore your hidden talents through team activities. You get a chance to study at one of the finance institutes of the Europe, and then you actually graduate with a double degree diploma. So in fact, it is basically for me, it is a three degree, uh, triple degree di diploma because you get two degrees from the university and one degree from the EIT in the Energy Masters program as well. So you actually get three degrees from a single Masters program. You get to connect with the industry. A lot because during the innovation journeys uh, activities, there are people from the industry, there are people from the startups who share their experiences at how, what kind of problems they ran into, what kind of challenges they, they had to face. So all these experiences you can learn from them, and then you can, uh, and then you can apply those things which, which were not uh, in, in the favor of the other people. You actually avoid those things, and then you go, uh, you go into another place. You find new challenges, you share with them, and then the process goes on. So again, I said, as I said earlier, that innovation is something that you that is not innate. That is something that is not uh, that that you are born with. Anybody can innovate. 
just we need to find the right methodologies you need to just find the right toolkit that how to innovate and how to find the new uh, new solutions to the particular problems so for me if i had to put all things together in one sentence it is life always begins with one step out of your uh, out of your comfort zone it is difficult in the first place but once you have understood that it is your comfort zone comfort zone that, that kills you silently then only then the true learning comes out so with that i would like to wrap up my presentation and thank you all for listening and uh, if you have any questions we'll, i'm here to answer them at the end of this uh, uh, of, of this program thank you Excellent presentation, Mateyab. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, we'll go on to George to make sure we don't run out of time, and then we'll go into the questions afterwards. I see my screen. Anna, yes. can you see my screen? Uh, George, yes, perfect. We can yeah, we see. Can. Mode. Yes. Yes. So, um, just to start with, uh, my name is George Arende. Uh, originally, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, but then I moved out of Kenya sometimes back, lived in South Africa, and then moved to Mozambique. And then I started working. So, I worked for a bit of time and I used to work in the energy sector where I got to do a couple of projects, uh, especially in the greenfield and Brownfield, uh, I used to promote investments. But then um, at one point, um, we had a bit of challenges in the sense that, you know, for some projects, if you are bidding for them, um, it was a requirement that you are needed to have a master's program. So this pushed me to look for a master program, which I could do. But then um, I looked at all the masters, other master's programs that existed um, back then. And then most of them, uh, there was something which was strange about them, unlike the you know energy masters program, where you know if you look at it in the first place, it involves a lot of activities. Uh, you get to travel, and then the business concept of it, it's more connected to the real world as opposed to the other masters, which are you know, it's just all about books and books, and then you never get to know what actually the industry needs. So having been in the industry, I wasn't looking for just an average master's program where I just have to read books. So this is what pushed me to apply for you know, Energy Master's program, and uh, I got admitted. Uh, just to give you a background of my studies, uh, I did uh, BSc Electrical and Electronics uh, back in Kenya. And I decided to focus on telecommunication and information engineering, and mostly in the cellular networks and signals and communication. Then after that, um, when I moved out, I was working mostly in the energy sector, and it's really an interesting field. So um, I gained more interest, understood how the sector works, and that pushed me, you know, to uh, to get the urge and the need to learn more in that sector. So um, maybe some of you are wondering, why do you need to study energy for, master, uh, energy for smart cities as a master's program? So um, when I worked in the energy industry, I realized that you know, there were some issues that you know, always kept on coming up again and again. Some of them were things like energy security, um, you guys have all heard of you know global warming and the need to offset CO2 emissions and you know social inclusion in the energy sector. This is a big problem. You know you have so many places where so many people don't have access to energy. So the need to address some of these issues in a very effective manner and to be able to collaborate and cooperate with other people in in the sector pushed me to actually do a master in energy for smart cities. And when I looked at you know, energy, there were quite a number of projects and they had a platform where they enabled people to collaborate. So if I looked at those, those were the actual ingredients that I needed at that point. And uh, I can promise you that ever since I started doing this master's program, everything you know, has been on point, nothing has gone wrong. 
So, um, so you realize that one of the biggest challenges we have today, and the reason why energy for smart cities is very important, that you know, most of most of the energy, almost 40% of the energy consumption today is consumed by the built environment. And that means, you know, we are talking about buildings and uh, uh, mobility, trains, and, you know, all these things that human needs on day-to-day -day life. And then, uh, so there's a need to actually address that so that, you know, we can offset the CO2 emissions. So, you know, they need to address this main issues challenging the world push me you know to be able to learn something and also after learning something i would be able to you know um, contribute yes so the next thing is maybe you're asking yourself why you know energy why do you need two universities is it necessary why do you need two masters program if you can just get one so you realize that you know we live in a very um, in a in a world which has a lot of you know diversity in it, and at any single point you never know who you'd be working with, you never know who you would be engaging with, you never know where you'd get an opportunity from. So uh, if you check the master's programs provided by the you know energy, you realize that you know um, you get for example, to choose a program where you do something in Sweden, which is on the other part of Europe, or you go to Barcelona, which is on the Southern part, two diff same continent, two different cultures. And you know, if you are able to identify with both cultures, then you are better than the next guy. I can tell you this for far, because you, know, you understand how that environment works. You also understand how the Swedish environment works. And you also understand how the environment uh, where you come from or whichever country you come from works. And if you combine all these three things, it gives you an added advantage. Yeah. And besides that, you know, uh, this, these are the trivial reasons, you know, why, which pushed me to choose uh, the, you know, energy masters. But also, you get to get the papers, which is a bonus. You get two master's programs from two different universities. And on top of that, you get uh, an EIT certificate so basically you are getting um three degrees while you know you spend two years uh two years in the university and if you just went for example you know to a regular university in in germany or in in KTI to do your masters you'd get one degree with the same amount of time so you see in this case you have a huge bonus with this Yes. So um, just to give you um, an overview of my journey. So um, for my first years, um, um, I, I was admitted at KTH in Stockholm. And um, the Inno Energy program really works really well because uh, we attended the Smart Cities Expo as part of the innovation journey. And it's really mind blowing because I think Inno Energy, they offer you more than more than you know more than you deserve they offer you more than you deserve literally because if you check even the smart cities uh, congress expo the requirement for you to just go there uh, it's it's just too much and then here you are you join a program and you know you join in september and then two months later you get access you know to uh, events like the smart cities congress expo uh, you go to the innovation journey you go to this boot camp and in each and every location you go to there's uh, a wide range of activities that are planned and the good thing about the innovation journey in itself it feels like it's a parallel business school that you are going to besides the the the, the 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 normal master's program that you are doing in your home university so for example when we went to barcelona we learned a lot of things you you know things like design thinking systematic innovation um, sprints how to carry out workshops all these things you are taught and you're not just taught by average people you're taught by you know top coaches within these industries so you get to meet incredible people uh, besides that, uh, they teach you the business steps, 
uh, they teach you the business procedure step by step. They show you, you learn new concepts. You know, there are things which maybe you imagined or you've never heard of, but you know, when you go to these events, you are taught what they mean, how to create a startup, um, how to source for funding, how to pitch, and you do practice over and over again. It's super intense, but the, by the time you finish, you really learn a lot out of it. So just to summarize what I was saying is you get way much more than you deserve. So you have to be super attentive to be able to actually take full advantage of the potential that this master's program offers. It's too much. And if you're not attentive, then you know some of the things will pass you along the way. So um, for my second year program, uh, I chose to go to UPC in Barcelona. And the reason why uh, I chose UPC is because most of the courses um, that are offered in Barcelona, they are management oriented because I like to work with people. I like you know, to, to manage people and to work with people. And I realized you know, that going to UPC and being doing my second year's master's program there uh, was in line with what I wanted to do. And also you get to do a mandatory internship. And this basically means that, you know, uh, as you're studying, you also get to work and you integrate into the industry and you learn more by doing, and you actually get academic credits for it. Then for my thesis, um, I'm actually doing it with KTH because uh, I had a very good bond with the teachers there. And it's it's super nice that you know in Barcelona they give you this opportunity and the flexibility to be able to do your thesis at whichever place you want to be. To be, for example, if you know um, you had a good connection with a company, for example, in Colombia, they they could allow you to go to Colombia and you know get to do your master thesis there, and you know they'll supervise you and then. Uh, they'll give you the grades and you'll be able to, to pass it. So uh, those are the things that drove me to choose uh, UPC in Barcelona for my second years. So uh, back on specialization. So having worked in the field and having you know done masters, uh, having done uh, some courses of the master's program, uh, I will choose to specialize in um, energy economics and sustainability. And the good thing with Inno Energy, and for example, in KTH where I was, is that you can literally choose the track you want to go to. You have like um, so many courses, and you can choose courses which literally matches what you want to do after you're done with school. And I knew that, you know, for me, it was energy economics and sustainability because these are things I'm really passionate about. And they're things that, you know, um, I feel energies when I talk about and, you know, they form part of my day-to-day -day conversations with people. So uh, the good thing about studying at KTH uh, and uh, the reason why my track is energy economics and sustainability is because uh, we got to work on different projects and they have a very unique way of learning, which is, uh, it's they, they call it challenge-based learning. So. A typical course would be you're given a challenge um, by a municipality or by the government or you know by a building and then you work on it it's a real project and then you deliver the 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 results and you write a report about it this also happens with um, the innovation journey and just to give you an example uh, in my innovation journey we were given a challenge by the government of Andorra. Uh, Andorra is a small country uh, outside the EU, just on the sides of, of, of Spain. Uh, for those of you who may not have an idea where it's located. So the government of Andorra, through Inno Energy, uh, they contacted Inno Energy to help them find solutions to their problems. And these problems are given to the master students. So we, we were given a challenge on how to increase uh, the energy efficiency in ski resorts. And uh, we, we created a team, and this is a very diverse team. And you know, 
uh, we had people from uh, Belgium. Uh, our team consisted of some people from Belgium and some people from KTH in Stockholm. And then, you know, you learn to be able to work with diverse people. You learn to uh, plan your things and, you know, be able to accommodate uh, different timings and deliver the project. And so also on work and project experience, uh, there's a municipality in Stockholm called Yafala, and uh, they're trying to create like uh, a smart city or uh, they have a smart city project. So we were, we were privileged to be able to work with them and uh, we helped them build their visions, vision 2030 and vision 2050 on how they should grow uh, with their sustainability and mobility plans, which was a very um, eye-opening, and you know, you get to you get to get your hands on the work, um, and they give you all the resources that you need to do that. I remember we even visited the, the parliament uh, in 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 Yafala, and you know, we met like the lawmakers and we discussed with them and we shared with them what we thought, which, you know, it's, 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 it's a rare opportunity that you could be given. Secondly, um, uh, I got to, you know, remodel um, something called the Energy Wen, which is uh, the German energy transition plan. So they have this energy, energy transition plan where, you know, they're trying to reduce or uh, be emissions free by, by 2050 and they had their 2020 goals, which they couldn't meet. And then we were given this challenge to look into what would have gone wrong, build a new model around that, and you know, try to explain it, you know, the economics behind it. So you're not just you know, sitting in a classroom, you're actually tackling real life challenges and trying to find you know, solutions to them. Uh, and the last one also, which we did, which was really interesting is, we were given a random building in, in Stockholm, we were given access to the building and then we had to like you know we were given the plans and everything and then we had to access that building and you know check um how energy is used and then you know we had to remodel the utilization of energy and uh, there are so many regulations and there are so many um efforts made by the government to ensure that you know energy consumption for example in buildings is is reduced by almost you know 60% because it forms a huge percentage of, of energy consumption within the energy mix. So we got to work on this project. And when you do this real life uh, uh, projects, then you get to learn a lot. You get to learn way much more to the extent that if you know uh, if you get into the works uh, workplace, then you have you have a skill that you can actually transfer. You are not going there again to be taught. You have things which you already know, and you are given a task, and you are able to do it with very little supervision. And this is also very important when you decide to you know work on your own startup, for example, because you really you already have the skills and you know what to do and how to do it, and you have the push to be able to do whatever needs to be done. And the good thing again with you know, energy is that they provide you with an umbrella. And this umbrella, you know, it has like startups, it has um, industry players, it has experienced people, and you get to interact with all these people and they support you because the, the weight of, you know, uh, starting a startup is too heavy that, you know, if you don't have proper support system, uh, sometimes there's a probability that the startup may not go too far and since you know energy has been within this environment and they know all you know the weak points they're they're there and they provide you with the with the uh, with the frames or with the with the with the uh, background or a support system to enable you flourish as um, an upcoming entrepreneur so um for future plans um um, I'm actually working on 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 a startup idea, uh, and also since I told you that guys that I'm very passionate about you know sustainability and energy, my main drive actually for also doing these things is that 
I want to be part of the people who make decisions on how we can shape the future of energy. So I want to be in that room and um, just help and contribute as much as I can. Um, the, uh, the only advice I can give you um, is that you can never go wrong with um, you know, energy or the master program that they find. Uh, most people may not know the full potential, but now listen, um, this is not written anywhere. You, you'll not find it on the website, but I'll, I'll tell you as a person who's been there, you know, who's seen. Uh, the, the network offers so much, so much that, you know, if you are a person who has an eye, who sees and who is able to identify opportunities, then you're good to go. So uh, if you ever get the chance to do this master's program, don't, don't hesitate. And then it comes with so much package that each and every day you'll be seeing opportunities and things you know you could jump onto, and you know it's 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 like a, a three sixty degrees transformation. That's all I could tell you guys. So um, if you have any question, I think this is the end of my presentation. So if you have any question kindly ask me and I'll be super happy to answer them. If you need any help with anything, you can also contact me and I'll be able to help you. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Um, thank you, George. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, uh, I know we are out of time and I know we went over a little bit, but we do have uh, some questions. So it would be great if um, you can uh, answer some of them. So I will go in the order that I have uh, received the questions. So first question uh, is uh, from a student who is wondering, um, uh, one moment, I'm just uh, opening it up. Um, so the student is wondering uh, about uh, the difference. Uh, so when you were considering and you selected energy for smart cities, can you please just specify if you looked at other programs such as renewable energy or energy technologies or any other programs? And how did you make your decision? Um, I think this would be very helpful to some of the students who are considering. Yes, so um, I actually looked at all of them. And um, when I was looking at them, I looked at you know how the program is structured, what it entails, and there's a very good description on the you know energy website. So the reason why I chose energy for smart cities is because um, this actually depends on what you want to do with your life um, specifically. So for me, I was so interested in the um, sustainability and energy economics, and I, I didn't want to go too technical um, on the energy aspects. So this is the reason why I went for energy for smart cities. If, if you know, if you are, for example, somebody who's very interested in things like power electronics, power system analysis, and you want, you know, to do uh, uh, extremely technical things, then there are other programs, for example, uh, Rene and, uh, uh, sustainability, how do you call it? There are other programs that actually, if you check the description, they fit uh, whatever you're looking for. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for clarifying. Um, I'm just looking at some um, other questions that are coming in. So some of the students are wondering if, um, uh, what is the student population like? Um, if it's diverse, uh, or um, you know, uh, have you met a lot of uh, people from different backgrounds? Yeah, we have a lot of people uh, from different backgrounds. Like I am from Pakistan, George is from Kenya, and there are a lot of people other from other places. Like we have people from India, we have people from Russia, we have people from Greece. So the program is quite diverse. You get actually get to meet people from different backgrounds and different cultures. So yeah, it's true that people are coming from all of the places. Yeah, just, just to add to what Mutayab said. So this is a very kind of special program and uh, sometimes not so many spaces are available. 
So just to give you a typical example, in my class in KTH, because um, we are divided into two, there's, there's one group of people that goes to Belgium and there's one group of people that goes to Stockholm. So in my class in KTH, we are around 15 people. And uh, out of the 15 people, uh, each and every person is from a different nationality. So that's how diverse it can get. Excellent. And I think um, uh, just to um, reassure the students as well, it is very varied and uh, we always uh, try to have a good mix of students from different uh, countries, different backgrounds. Um, and we also work uh, on making sure, uh, and this is to all our female engineers as well, we also uh, would like to make sure we have a good ratio between female and male engineers as well in the programs. Um, I have um, some questions uh, that perhaps um, I can answer because it's about scholarships. So there's a question about scholarships and how the scholarships are allocated. So um, there's a, a separate procedure for scholarships on our website. Um, essentially, what would happen is you would have to apply for the scholarship. And then um, you, your application would be reviewed by the university, so uh, the consortium of the program where you would like to, um, the program that you would like to attend. Um, and then uh, afterwards, uh, the top students will be allocated the scholarship from the application badge. So uh, uh, I'm happy to also share a link about uh, the procedure within the chat so you can have a look, uh, more detailed information there. Um, uh, we also have a student who's asking if the a session is being recorded uh, and yes it is recorded and I will share the session with all the students who have participated in it as well. Um, I don't have any other questions at the moment from students. I think it's because uh, uh, you, George and Mutayab have covered the topic uh, quite extensively. So you've provided a lot of information, which is great. Um, I was wondering, um, before we round up the session today, if you would be interested to contributing anything or suggesting um, like any last uh, advice to give to the students who are considering to coming and studying here in Europe. Mm, yeah, my advice would be that the experience that I, ha that I had uh, at Leuven and hopefully now it's going to be quite great at KTH. Josh can answer that quite well, that how the experience at KTH goes on, <laughs> but I'm just new here. So for now, it's quite, it's, it's quite, it's, it's okay. But for Leuven, Leuven is going to be a little tough, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, you. I myself failed one course, but it's not that it's not a big deal. You can pass the course afterwards, but don't consider it as the end of your life. So living is going to be difficult. Maybe KTH would be difficult. Maybe it's not. I, I cannot say that for sure. But don't be afraid to do big things in life. Everything comes out of your comfort zone and anything that is out of your comfort zone, it is going to be tough in the first place because I am finding it quite difficult to adjust here in Stockholm because I just stepped out of my comfort zone of living. So it is going to be a little difficult in the first place, but don't be afraid that it's going to be end of your world, end of your life. So it's not, it's just a new beginning. You are just learning. So consider everything as a learning opportunity that you face in, uh, in this master's program. Consider everything as a new experience that is going to add in your life. So don't be afraid to do big things in life. Don't be afraid. So, that is yeah. ex excellent advice, Mutayab. George, is there anything else you um, you would like to add to the students uh, who are currently considering the programs and uh, con uh, deciding between the programs they would like to study? Yes, so um, I, I, I think I already gave them uh, a bit of advice before, but uh, um, it doesn't harm to, you know, uh, repeat it again. So uh, the only thing um, I could tell you guys is that um, if you really want to have, you know, a, a very international and diverse experience, this is one of the programs that you, know, you could look in because uh, essentially um, it gives you a platform where, you know, you are able to um, um, coexist in a very, uh, in, in, in a culture, you, you are able to coexist globally because when you get to do these kind of programs then you know it makes things which you were not able to reach before reachable and what do i mean with that uh, 
if, for example, you study in KTH and also you study in Belgium or you study in Barcelona, then just by the fact that, you know, you can relate to these two environments, it exposes you to either the entrepreneurial ecosystem within Europe and also the job market within those places. And, you know, this just puts you in a position where you are able to coexist um, in a very large spectrum. So if you can, please don't waste the opportunity to join this program. Thank you, George. Thank you for the excellent advice as well. Uh, Motayaba, George, um, thank you so much for presenting today and taking the time. I know you're busy. Uh, I know a lot of you are interning as well at the moment. Um, so we are really out of time, but I just want to let the participants know that we will have another webinar for renewable energy, which will take place on 27th of August at the same time. So please have a look on our website and sign up for that as well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact our study advisors. The information is available on our master school page. Um, and uh, I look forward to you all joining us at the next webinar and uh, wish you a very good day. And uh, as I said, any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Have a lovely day, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.